are watching the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. Turkey Day weekend and Tampa, what a perfect combination. We are on the gorgeous campus of USF, where the Bulls run with the Bulldogs of the Citadel. Welcome inside the Yingling Center, everybody. Ari Shanock alongside Mark Wise. And Mark, everybody recovering from overeating, too much turkey, too much stuffing. Sometimes that can pose a bit of a challenge for the home team. And that challenge today for USF is going to come at the arc. The Citadel shoots a lot of threes. They make a lot of threes. The Bulls, they better have a defensive presence from bonus land today. Uh, we have a pair of terrific guards in this one. David Collins of the Bulls and Lou Stallworth of the Bulldogs. At the end of last season, David Collins had become USF's best player. And after a somewhat slow start, he's hitting his stride again. He's gone for 21 in each of the last two games, knocking down a red hot seven of 10 from bonus land. I love his physical presence at the two guard. For the Citadel, the only guy who doesn't shoot a lot of threes is a perfect fit for the Bulldogs in grad transfer, Lou Stallworth. He's the driver, the creator, and is coming off a fabulous game in that road win at James Madison with 26 points, but he also finds his teammates better than six assists every game out. And there is head coach Duggar Baucom in his fourth season here. After a 10-year stint at VMI, he is the first coach in program history to improve his Southern Conference record in each of the first three seasons at the helm. Well, this team will shoot from distance. Mark in the gym is in their range. Well, you take a look at some of the numbers. I mean, you better get back, especially in transition, because Coach Balcom's team, they're going to let it fly today. And we are underway here, USF 4-1, 3-0 here at the Yingling Center. They lead the all-time series against the Citadel 2-1. The Bulldogs 3-2. As a skip pass to Collins, their leading score glides in, tipped in by Michael Durr, the seven-footer. That's going to be a story of this one, Mark, is the size difference. Well, the Bulls have an advantage on the offensive end with their size, but they have a disadvantage defensively because they're going to have to guard all five guys in blue on the arc. And here's a seven-footer guarding the perimeter. That will be a challenge for the seven-foot freshman. They go around him to the hoop. Offensive rebound gathered by the Bulldogs. Frierson nails a three. That didn't take long. Frierson now 45 straight games with a three-point. And right away, the best three-point shots come after offensive rebounds. Why? Because the defense is scattered. Yetna from just beyond the elbow hits. Alexis Yetna, the freshman from France, who is averaging eight points a game, nine and a half rebounds, which leads the American Athletic Conference. As a drive, reverse layup. Collins in transition gets fouled. There's a great example of the physicality I talked about at the open with David Collins. The way he can attack in transition, his upper body strength doesn't mind the contact. And there he is head coach Brian Gregory in his second season after stints at Georgia Tech from 2011 to 2016, and Dayton from 2003 to 2011. His team is 4-1, and one, Ari. They very easily could be 6-0. and oh. I had the game in Jamaica against Georgetown. Couldn't get a stop at the end, and then still had five seconds and didn't manage that last shot situation very well. It got beat in overtime. Let one slip away probably against the Hoyas. David Collins hits both foul shots. And it's 6-3 USF. Webster, the freshman, getting his first career start. Local product out of Tampa. Here's Stallworth, nearly dragged that pivot, but almost cut, came out of his shoe. Yeah, I think he did. <laughs> he had to wedge his foot, his shoe back on his foot. He blew a tire early on. <laughs> He's going to refasten that. 
is the talented grad student out of L.A. He's 25th in the nation in assists at 6.2 per game. I would have to think, though, that Brian Gregory very pleased because they have slowed the Citadel down in their possessions the first couple of trips. T.J. Lang comes out to let him do. 1-3-1 zone. Ball must go below the free throw line to have success. Kind of morphs into a 3-2 matchup. There's the ball below the free throw line. Corner three, just a little shy from T.J. Lang. In transition, Stallworth. You can see, though, Ari, five guys in blue all on the perimeter. Bulldogs do not have a block-to-block -block presence on the offensive end. Their inside scoring comes from drives. And there's a drive by Curran, well defended, and strong rebound by David Collins. Collins in transition to Lang. Jump pass into the corner. Rideau will launch for three. Weak side rebound, and a foul committed by Stallworth over the top of T.J. Lang. Rideau's having some major issues early on shooting from the arc. He's now two for 16 on the season. And you could see even on that attempt, he was a little hesitant, you know, do I shoot? Yeah, looked like he was guiding it, didn't it? LaQuincy averaging 10 points a game. Also, six assists a game leads the team, leads the team in steals with a dozen. Part of that size disadvantage that the Bulldogs will have to deal with. Kern was matched up inside against Durr. That's seven foot against 6'4". So four team fouls early on for the Citadel. Caden Rice, sophomore, has checked in. Lane backing up on his dribble. Yet not in the short corner. Good ball movement by USF Durr. Has a big size advantage. Goes to his left and banks it in with a left hand. Impressive for the freshman coach. And I like the patience there. I like the way he caught, surveyed the defense, evaluated, and then went to score. DJ Lang disrupts that pass from Najdawi. Najdawi playing the five spot. He will step out and shoot it. Averaging 11 points a game, just one of five from beyond the arc this season. Well, that will be the challenge for Durr to cover the agile Najdawi. Stallworth in traffic. Three-pointer is right through. Scored by Caden Rice. You just can't have hands down against a team like this that is as prolific a three-point shooting team as is the Citadel. And here's another change of defense now. This looks more conventional. Again, the ball's got to go odd-numbered zone, meaning there's a point guard out front. The ball's got to go below the free throw line. Frierson pulls up for three, yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Don't attack the rim. Shoot the three ball. No hesitation there. He is averaging five triples per game. That ranks him fifth in the nation. The challenge for USF today will be guarding the arc in the half court. Oh, yeah. Transition even more so. Matt Frierson knocks down the three in the early going. You are watching the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. The Citadel leads by one. Here's why the best three-point shots come after offensive rebounds. See all the guys in white in the paint? They're disorganized. The kick out to Frierson is on point. And we talked about the Citadel and their ability to shoot threes. Some of the numbers are just ridiculous. They're averaging 37 attempts per game. They are making almost 14 a game. I think that qualifies, doesn't it, as volume shooting? <laughs> that's about as much turkey as you ate. <laughs> that's, that's the way Coach Baucom teaches it. They average 105 points per game. They've hit 69 triples coming into the action. Today they've already hit three of them here. Rideau straight on three. Again, kind of pulled back, pulled the string on that, Coach. Notice the zone did not honor him. They're going to make Rideau see if he can knock down some shots. 
The Citadel team, they go deep, nearly a walk there. That was a travel, yeah. yeah. Reed got happy to be. They've committed 15 fouls already, but this team goes very deep. Coach Balcom not afraid to go into the depth of this bench. So Fryerson will take his first break with Connor Kern checking back in, the 6'4 grad student. Arkansas State transfer, averaging 10 a game. Collins as they break the press. Wide open underneath, yet now lays it in. But again, nice job by Collins, looking, looking, the patients offensively. Citadel trying to hit back quickly. A rare post play, but before that shot, the first foul called on USF. As Najdawi worked in the post, he was first team all SOCON last season. USF, it doesn't really matter in a game like this who you get quickly defensively in transition, and that means you're going to get some mismatches from time to time. Justin Brown has checked in the game, replacing T.J. Lang. Skip pass, good ball movement by the Bulldogs. Reed, Stallworth finds Reed for three. Rebound battled for and secured by Antoon Marichevich. Underneath wide open, Yetna with the right hand this time. Scores another layup. That's what Rido does best. Find teammates. Oh, is that a quick release? Beautiful stroke and bucket by Caden Rice. Hope you like your action 94 feet, literally, as Justin Brown stepped on the end line. Rice in the last game at JMU did not make a three, he was 0 for 4. Didn't hesitate from the corner. Yeah, he could shoot it, the sophomore had eight triples last season against Western Carolina. You know oh. how hard that is to do in a game? Eight made three, it's hard to make eight threes in practice. They also scored 14 points on the road in Columbus against Ohio State last December, so he can play. Not Jawi, the high arcer. Offensive rebound, here's another opportunity. Straight on three by Rice is good. Offensive rebound, defense is scattered, make the extra pass, shoot the three ball. 15 to 12, the Citadel. Collins, he'll launch a three, shot, and Rice elevates for the rebound. Tipped ahead, nifty pass ahead to keep it away from the defender. But USF able to get it back. Rideau, better follow through, hit the heel of the rim. And Rice out quickly for the Bulldogs. Skip pass, Frierson, good. I don't think USF wants to get in a three-point shooting contest with the Citadel. The pace of the game right now in the Citadel's favor. It's a mistake by Rito picking up his dribble at midcourt. USF 0 for 5 from beyond the arc. The Citadel 6 of 9. Yetna and 1. Yetna has played so well as of late, averaging a double-double in his last three games. Better than 12 points, better than 11 rebounds. We talk about the pace of this game. Rito, look at the eyes look one way, the pass goes another. No look pass, great finish, great helper. Yetna with the easy finish. Uh, Rito, six assists per game. Yetna perfect on the day, four for four from the field. And now connects on his first free throw. He will take a break with a substitute for Coach Gregory. That's good news for Brian Gregory, too, because Yetna below 500, below 50% at the free throw line. Left-hander shot that one with confidence, though. Rashawn Williams, a freshman, hasn't received much time this season. Makes his first appearance today. In the post, draws a double, tried to pass out of it, and Marichevic the steal. Brown in the corner, Collins goes to the rim, hangs and scores. So strong, Mark. No time to rest, here they come with Williams. 
driving the ball ahead. Both these teams playing really unselfishly. Fryer said you cannot leave him. USF, a little fortunate there. Castaneda ahead to Brown. Shovel pass hit the mask of Marichevic. And here's transition. They were looking for Fryerson. There's the drive and the score for Kaleon Harris. The junior out of Atlanta. Boy, up and down they run. Yeah, I'm looking up at the players right now. Both teams a little gassed. Brown for three, rimming no. As USF continues to struggle from distance. It's USF's most consistent three-point threat, Justin Brown. That's Williams. danger. In and out. Elevating for the rebound. Nice job by the freshman Williams. Casaneda lost it on the way up, and that will be a turnover. And the threes. Six of them by the Citadel. Well, you have to step out on the perimeter or they will make you pay. The Bulldogs up by three here in Tampa. One of the keys today will be not to settle in transition. Watch as David Collins gets the pass from the corner, shot fakes, which allows the driving angle baseline side that's an easy finish and an easy deuce. And I mentioned this earlier, Ari, that USF does not want to get swept up in a three-point shooting contest. Already today, the Citadel, six for 11. Meanwhile, the Bulls are firing blanks, 0 for 6. And the Bulls, they rank second in the American Athletic Conference, a three-point field goal defense, holding opponents at 28.7%. That number's going up today. Yes, it is. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb. <laughs> Frierson steps back. I love the way Frierson moves without the ball. Yeah, he glides into open areas, doesn't he? Here's Stallworth, pure points. Five seconds on the shot clock. Stallworth penetrates, loops it up and in. Soft touch by Stallworth. Lou Stallworth, that's the way he scores, drives, slashes. The only real player for the Citadel that does not shoot threes. Watch this drive, and then at the end of this play, Michael Durr goes up the block and looks like he comes down awkwardly. But good news, playing through it. It hobbles back to the front court. USF has won six straight here at home against non-conference opponents, and they are hoping for the pro program's first five and one start since 2014-15 season. Castaneda inside, quick turnaround, pull up, nicely done by the freshman Williams. Turn, good find, excellent passing, Stallworth for three, and Williams secures the rebound. Tell you what, Williams, the youngster, make a shot, get a rebound, you'll get more minutes. Yeah, he's earning him. Playing along the baseline, smooth performer. There's Williams for three. Weak side rebound. A little interior feed. Not very good spacing. Calling the timeout alert play by Williams. Now Coach Gregory will get the T.O. with his team trailing by three. Everything that the Citadel does when they drive to the rim, when they get an offensive rebound, when they're moving in transition, it's all designed to do one thing, and that's to get defenders to suck in defensively so that they can kick out for threes. And right now, I think USF getting caught a little bit turning their head, Ari, because typically when a guy drives, your natural reaction is to get and help, help in out, gap yeah. coverage. Cannot do that today. Make the Citadel score two at a time. Now, this is a team that put up 148 points against Mid-Atlantic Christian, 137 versus Johnson of Florida. And that big overtime victory on Tuesday 
at an undefeated James Madison team. They score 91. Uh, the defense. Uh, the Bulls will be tested. There's the lob underneath. Dern with the slam for the big freshman. Michael Durr out of Atlanta. There's a penetration rejected, but a foul on the drive. Let's see if they rule that one before the shot, and they do. Brown did a nice job recognizing what was on the weak side in the last USF possession. Brian Gregory's team has an advantage, block to block in that high rent district on the offensive end. Touch Dowie, back to Reed. He hands to Rice, who's perfect from the floor. Now just three of four. Kern, the offensive rebound. And that's the one thing that the Bulls can ill afford is giving up those offensive rebounds. A block. It did not drop, but two free throws upcoming for the Citadel. And Stallworth. Well, you want to be a ref at this level, you have to learn how to recognize this call. And I don't care restricted area arc or not, the block charge is always the most difficult call of all. Take another look, is the defender set or not by the time the offensive player gets airborne? That looked pretty good to me. Good call, huh? Or are you gonna, you no, I thought that was a charge. I thought the yeah. defender got there. Okay. Stalwart. But again, it's a, it's a bang, bang play. It's the toughest call for any official. How many games did you get thrown out of over the no comment. charge? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Stallworth free throw is in. Those are the first free throws of the game for the Citadel. Now Stallworth will take a break with a pat on the backside from Coach Balcom. There's full court pressure. Durr ahead to Lang. TJ gliding in transition. Back to Castaneda, the freshman out of Chicago. Whitney Young High School. Yet not calling for the ball low right. See if they can get it to him on this angle. They do. Yeah, walk there. So a couple freshmen connect for a turnover. It was a great look by Yetna, but the pass was just a little low. It wasn't on the numbers, and a shooter always likes to catch the ball where they can catch and go right into their shooting rhythm. Williams pulls up for three front rim and elevating for another rebound, but throws it away. Williams lost his footing, excuse me, Brown lost his footing. Tried to release a pass, but it went out of bounds. You know the most frustrating part of that is that you work so hard defensively at the arc. You've got to chase these guys all around. You finally get a rebound. You don't need to give it right back. Well, USF has done a better job covering the perimeter as of late, as the Citadel has missed their last five tray attempts. Well, Coach Gregory, he certainly knows something about defense. Spent nearly a decade as assistant coach under Tom Izzo at Michigan State. Now you got to call something there. Bodies flying. Yeah. My goodness. Quaison Williams. And that's an illegal screen. And then the pick and roll pass goes off of USF, evidently. So the Bulldogs will keep it with 17 on the shot clock. I thought we were talking about freedom of movement this year. <laughs> I see bodies <laughs> flying. Take another look. This is an illegal screen. There's a slip down on the wet spot because of the previous possession, loose ball. You know, if I'm USF, I want the mop guys out there a lot today <laughs> at the pace of the game, man. You got to do anything to slow the pace of the game down. How much deeper will Coach Gregory go into the bench because of the amount of players and the pace that I Citadel th brings? I think it's a great question, but a lot of his depth is front court depth. Yeah. So you cannot match up that way. That's the difficulty of guarding the Citadel. Here's a great example. Yetna has to guard out on the floor. Williams for three, yes. See, that's what I call lazy closeout. It's like a parade wave. I mean, you've got to get out there and be on the catch against this squad. Collins. 
Sees no advantage. Comes out to Rideau. Well, bench points 11 to 2 in favor of the Citadel. Yetna at the foul line, a little high low with Durr. Collins for three, in and out. Good elevation by Lang. Turn around, Jay won't drop. Durr another offensive rebound. Rideau bustles it up and in. I don't know how he got that one off. Good strength. Uh, ahead they run. And that is a charge. Well, we talked about earlier, you like your action 94 feet. You're in the right place. The scores are coming often and early. The Citadel from beyond the arc with regularity. USF responds with the drive and the tough finish by Rido. Bulldogs up early. And welcome back to the Yingling Center, the Citadel in South Florida running up and down the floor and the big man. Keep your eye on number four, White, Michael Durr, who goes weak side, knows he has a size advantage. Justin Brown recognizes it. That's a good angle pass on the weak side against the Citadel undersized zone. Nice cut by Durr to create the advantage. Nice vision by Brown with the delivery. Well, it's a battle between two different styles. USF, they want to pound it inside. Yetna, perfect from the field, four for four. Michael Durr, perfect from the floor, three for three. Meanwhile, USF 0 for eight from the beyond the arc, and the Citadel seven for 15. Yeah, that's plus 21 in three-point differential. Rido finally nails a triple. Well, if you're gonna be a shooter, you better have some amnesia. Watch out, Frierson, yes! Almost an and one as he was hit on the follow through. Again, transition defense paramount today. Rito, see if that helps his confidence. Dirt, back to the point guard. There's still Dirt daring Rito to shoot. Rito, a little Euro step and draws the foul with his shoulders. All right, I talked about transition defense. What that means is as soon as you score, you better sprint back. Watch how fast this happens. After the Rideau three, it's a pass in, a pass ahead on the arc, a little dribble handoff, and Frierson knocks down the three ball. Yeah, Frierson now four for six for three-point land. Stallworth returns for Rice. And also for the Bulldogs, Tyler Burgess, junior out of Easley, South Carolina, averaging five points a game off of the bench. Rideau has struggled from the free throw line as well, just 46%. But not some ball down. Good sign for the Bulls. Rideau checking Stallworth. Burgess into the corner. Stallworth to the rim, and he was bothered by Yetna. That's one he'd like to have back, though. He usually makes that shot. Durr calling for the ball in the post. The ball's got to go in. Those big guys are asking for it. That's a poor pass. Yeah, was it too high for the seven-footer there from Rito? Uh, Yetna was open a couple of different times. Maybe a step off the block. Ball fake, fake the ball reversal, but get the ball into the bigs. So Mayan Kerr makes his first appearance this afternoon. Sophomore out of break, 10 transfer from LSU. 6-9, straight on three, Burgess would drop. That ball tipped into the USF bench, so Bulls possession, trailing by two. Tell you what would bother me if I were Brian Gregory about that possession. That ball was tipped out on the rebound, but the guys in blue, they're the only ones jumping for rebounds. Oh, you talked about that holiday weekend, whole game, always a little precarious. No question about it. You kind of bring, have to bring your own juice to the building. 
Again, I'd like to see USF get some corner touches to make the zone totally rotate. TJ Lang from the corner. And Lang in a little bit of a shooting slump right now. Frierson, they jump out at him, still able to release, but was bothered by Rito. And that ball out of bounds, stay here for the Bulldogs, leading by two. As you get a good look at Derek Webster heading to the bench. Does Frierson have the green light for Duger Balkum or what? Yeah, when you shoot it like that, why not? Got four trades already here today. Averaging five a game, that's fifth in the nation. There he is, hooks a pass to Stallworth against Yetna. Straight on three. And look at the elevation by May and Kerr. That's going for a rebound. Beautiful find from Rito and the score from Yetna. Got to get back in a hurry. Because here they come, Stallworth, easy lay-in. That's where USF gets mismatched in transition. Yeah, that time, everybody's so concerned at jumping at the perimeter, and Stallworth went right in for the easy layup. Go back and take a look after the miss. Watch Rido again get the outlet pass, and immediately look ahead. See the way he caught and surveyed? Another no-look pass, and another easy deuce for Yetna. And Yetna now five for five from the field. Kerr comes into Brown. Back to Kerr. Look at the long athlete handle the ball. The pass deflected. Brown for three. USF continues to struggle from beyond the arc. Brown and Lang both. Last couple of games having trouble knocking down the three ball. Kern. Stallworth organizing. In the post, not Dowie. Jump hook wouldn't fall and strong rebound by Yetna. Pass deflected by the Citadel as Coach Malcolm applauds the effort of his troops. They are up by two here with under four minutes, trying to knock off the Bulls on their home courts. And welcome back to the Gulf Coast of Florida here in Tampa. There is the Yingling Center. We are inside on the beautiful campus of USF. Thanksgiving weekend, no place you'd rather be is the fan. Flaring away here for the Bulls. All right, let me tell you, that is one of the best pep bands in the American Conference. Yeah, they they are. are outstanding and have been for a while. And of course, if you're playing Earth, Wind & Fire, man, come on, you're, you're talking to my heart. Yeah, just don't start dancing on us, coach. <laughs> Rido pressured here at the timeline by Kern. Oh, good pass on the cut towards the hoop. Unable to handle it was Kerr. Yeah, but it had a lot of miles per hour. Yeah, too it. much velocity. Well, that is turnover number seven for USF. They've only turned the Citadel over four times. And they are 31st nationally marked. And steals per game at 9.2 are the Bulls. They have a couple here this afternoon. A little bump on Rideau on the perimeter against Najdawi. Just team foul number four, so no shots. But again, you get a, a sense, a feel for how the Citadel likes to attack the paint. Not to score, but to find a three-point shooter. Yeah, penetrate and dish. Harris back to Notch Dowie. Hands to Kern, eight seconds on the shot clock. Five seconds to the rim, and rebounded by Brown as he flew in weak side. Brown ahead to Collins. 
Davis had a couple of transition looks from three that he's passed on. Mark. Oh, Live pass. Yetna. Little jump hook would drop. His first miss of the day. That pass was just off target enough to throw off Yetna's timing. Harris thought about the three. A little inside out dribble, lost it on the way up and then had it pushed back by Yetna. Brown in transition. Yeah, Brown did not look that in. Kind of anticipated contact that never came. Rice bam. There's the X factor in the first half. Caden Rice, who no just knocked down his fourth three ball here in the first 20 minutes. He came in shooting 32% from three point land. But remember, he hit eight threes last season against Western Carolina. And now it's a 17 to 2 bench scoring advantage for the Citadel. Rito will step through and lays it in. Kind of received an excuse me screen from Yetna along the way. Dowie, crossover dribble, and couldn't hit it over Kerr. Kerr has extraordinary length that he can get up to. Well, I like the aggressiveness though of Kalen Harris, the way he goes to the glass for the Citadel. Take another look in transition. Drive and kick. Extra pass. Caden Rice, corner three ball. Count it. Number four. Minute 46 remaining in the half. Full court pressure deployed by the Bulldogs. Collins is trapped. Gets help from Castaneda. Kerr grabbed from behind by Williams. So Mayen to the line to shoot two. Kerr's found himself at the line a lot this season. Already been there 19 times, 79%, which is really solid. It is coming off a really solid game against FAMU, one of the few guys that I thought was really good in that game. Nine points, six rebounds. Just has a good looking stroke for a guy that size. Has a tremendous upside. Yeah, good motor too. As you look at Coach Balka. I don't know where Coach Bauckham's seat is on the bench, but Ari, he's not going to be in it, ever. <laughs> well, there's no room. As deep as he goes, they ran out of seats. Look, everybody to his, right around him, they've all taken those yeah. seats up. The only seat is way down on the bench. Head coach is not going to sit that far down. Getting back to Mayan Kerr, he was a four-star prospect by ESPN. 95th best prospect in the nation coming out of Victory Rock Prep here in Bradenton, or nearby Bradenton, native of South Sudan. He began his career at LSU. That's a mistake by Webster. He could have finished at the rim. A little misdirection play, and he confused his own teammates. And Alex Reed returns to the court. Full court pressure, inbounds to Brown. Collins comes to the freshman Castaneda. That's a no-no. That's danger, picking up your dribble against the press. Kerr charges right in to the Citadel and Derek Webster. That's a great example of the press doesn't always have to have an effect in backcourt. It can also impact what happens in the front court because it puts the ball in the wrong guy's hand as a decision maker. Yeah, there's, there's a lot, a lot of responsibility on Kerr at that point of attack, coach. Stallworth. And Rice is calling for a walk. Just tried to go too fast. It's almost like USF has left Castaneda on an island against this press. They're gonna double back and, and run and jump on this. Watch as the defender looks for it. And that time they back off into the zone. Two for one opportunity for the Bulls to close the half. Yep, 50 seconds. Now 15 on the shot clock. 
Too Collins. much standing. Yeah, Collins asking for the ball. Now just seven. Brown will launch. Yes. So bailed out by a corner three by Justin Brown. USF in the lead. Bulldogs need to go for the last one. Now remember, USF has a foul to give. I would give one late, five seconds. College coaches haven't really caught on to this. A way of life in the NBA. Stallworth penetrates, lost it on the way up, and Bulls ball with plenty of time here to get a shot off. That's mismanagement by Stallworth. He had much more time. He's now given USF plenty of time to score at the other end. With this much time, you can race the ball up and get any look you want. The Citadel will pressure full court and try to slow USF down. Kern returns for Stallworth. As USF will try to get it to Collins and let him burn down the court. Nearly had it stolen, but a cheap reaching foul picked up on Webster. Yeah. Coach Bauckham doesn't like the call, but again, you've got to give the guy with the ball room. You must protect the guy with the ball. No reason to foul 65 feet from the basket. Put David Collins at the free throw line. Now, this is an area that must get better for Collins this season. Yeah, 58%. As he connects. Seems a little odd, Ari, but I, I kind of sense that the Citadel has kind of forced the issue here in the first 20 minutes, and yeah. yet here's Brian Gregory and USF up two, maybe three. Out front, yeah. Still Stay. have another foul, still have a foul to get. Collins now three of three on the day for the free throw line. Well, I don't like putting guys, not putting guys on the free throw line. Part of the American Athletic Conference All Rookie Team last season. And timeout for the Citadel. And now Coach Balcom, as you look at Coach Gregory, he has to be pleased that the way the Citadel came out on fire from distance, and yet, like you said, somehow his team in front of you. It's awfully difficult to win college basketball games in this day and age when you have such a negative three point differential. And since the Citadel has made more than their three share of three pointers, yeah. nine, of, nine 20, of twenty. So that's a USF has only made two. So that's minus twenty-one in three-point differential that USF has to overcome. Yeah, that's quick math, Coach. I'm impressed. But on the two side, Citadel three of eleven, while the Bulls are twelve of sixteen. So we knew we'd see an enormous contrast in styles. And right now, USF with the slight edge. The key is, can they get Stallworth, and I'm talking about the Citadel, can they get Stallworth on the run here? They get it to him on the curl. Collins, the strip with one second, miss the dunk. Can you believe it? And Coach Baucom arguing the official, he wanted a foul on this side like they got one on the other one in the backcourt. David Collins was giving a foul. That's what he was trying to do on the reach, and it created a steal opportunity. Coach Bauckham not real happy about the non-call. There's the steal after the play, and that's one you just cannot miss if you're David Collins. So are you saying justice prevails there? <laughs> oh, what a first half of action. Up and down this court, the three-point shooting of the Citadel against the size and strength of the Bulls. And right now, it's USF by three. Back inside the Yingling Center here on the campus of USF. The Bulls by three at the half. Here's the coach's preseason poll in the conference, coach. State of Florida at the top and the bottom. UCF preseason number one. And uh, they're going to 
have to learn how to play the, this year being the hunted instead of the hunter. And I've got news for everybody. I saw USF almost beat Georgetown in Jamaica. The Bulls are going to be better than last. I, I, I just uh, think they have an opportunity maybe to be in that six, seven, eight range somewhere in there. Yeah, and they're trying to become five and one this season. It was a look at news and notes from around the conference. Good bounce back by UCF after losing at home to FAU. They went to Myrtle Beach and won that invitational. As a result, Aubrey Dawkins, who had a marvelous final against Western Kentucky, was named Player of the Week. How about Shiz Alston Jr. at Temple joining the 1,000 point club? And then Armani Brooks from Houston. Everybody knows Brooks is a three-point shooter. Everybody knows you have to close out on Brooks. Everybody knows you better find where Armani Brooks is at the arc, and yet he is shooting 64% from bonus land. Big game tonight as Houston is on the road at BYU. Yeah, that should be a good one. He's a little bit like Matt Frierson the three-point specialist for the Citadel as he has the Bulldogs to within three here at the half. You are watching the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. USF by three here at halftime in Tampa. And welcome back here to the Yingling Center where USF leads the Citadel at the break by three points and no time to digest your food in this one. <laughs> you are racing up and down the court. It's a battle of threes versus a battle of twos. The Citadel won the battle at the arc. They made nine versus USF's two, but the Bulls won block to block. They made 12 twos. The Citadel only made three. And they outscore the Bulldogs 20 to six in the paint as we go to the highlights. Right away we see the three-point shooting of Matt Frierson and the Bulldogs. USF had the advantage block to block and took advantage of that in the first half. They scored 20 points in the paint, whether you're talking about the half court or in transition. But if you're gonna guard this Citadel squad, you better find shooters all the time. The X Factor in the first half, Caden Rice with four three balls. They're not shy about shooting anytime, anywhere. In a game that had six lead changes in the first half, the action, much like you're seeing our highlights, back and forth the entire 20 minutes. Yeah, you got four threes by Rice, four by Frierson leading the way for the Citadel as they are going up and down. Here you see the totals from the first half. Well, again, the Citadel wins everything at the arc. USF wins everything block to block. And they connect on eight of nine from the free throw line, does USF, enabling them to build this three-point advantage after the quick start from the Bulldogs. We'll be back in a moment from Tampa. The home of the Bulls, University of South Florida here in Tampa, gorgeous November afternoon. And they are loving it inside the Yingling Center with the Bulls leading by three as we begin the second half. What adjustments do you see coming? by both sides, Coach. Well, for Brian Gregory and USF, I'm, I'm talking about transition defense. You cannot run back down the floor in the middle of the floor. Duger Bauckham, I think he's going to stay with what was successful in the first half, and that's that matchup zone. Stalwart lobs into the front court. Notch Dowie spinning over Durr. Durr surprised at the foul call. Pretty solid defensively there for the freshman. One on one in the post. Durr guilty of the foul. Let's see where his hand is. Does it go in? Yep. You see the way it just goes down far enough to impact the shooting action. You can see his teammates trying to help him out, saying, go straight up, big man. Dodge Dowie connects on the first of two. 
Najdawi, an excellent free throw shooter, 80%. Really had a tough go of it in the first half, but you would think that because he's an undersized big in this game. There's the jinx, coach, but this is the second free throw. Mid-season form. <laughs> yeah, he's only 6'7", playing the five. Rido banks it up, no good. Good box up by Najdawi. He's saying they were over my back. The rebound is corralled by Yetna. I think Yetna, I think you're right, Ari. I think Yetna got away with one there. Yetna, the leading scorer for the Bulls with 11 points, also now has four rebounds. The impressive freshman out of France. Bronze medal with the France 2017 FIBA under 20 European Championship team. And we have a tie up. It'll be USF ball. I think Frierson was trying to get a timeout call. The official didn't see it fast enough. Quincy Rideau. USF needs to get Lang going. They, they've got to knock down some shots from the perimeter. Yeah, TJ still scoreless, Mark. He's 0 for 3 from the field. Here he is. Bounces to Yetna. Yetna goes to the right hand, follows his miss, goes up with the stronger left hand, and connects. Second effort, second chance points. Good board, board work by Yetna. Yetna now with 13. Frierson for three. Almost fell. And TJ Lang there for the rebound. TJ glides into the front court. Collins. Collins has been very patient here. You remarked about that in the first half. See, I like this by USF. Get what you want on the offensive end. DJ fake the three, floats it up short, kind of aimed to that one. Here comes Stallworth, two he on needs, three. He needs to just shoot like that guy. Yeah, Friars had not shy. They disrupted his rhythm there. Here comes Rido. And it poked away, and both players on the court. This will favor the Citadel. Coach Gregory said his arm got hit. And Coach Balka make, making the same signal on his side. Now you know when both coaches are ha not happy, there's two things going on. One, nobody's scoring, because you've got more wild plays. And two, the officials need to blow more whistles. And I'm a firm believer, I think we need more whistles in our game. And everybody goes, well, that just slows the game down. But our game is way too physical. Yeah. And it needs to be corrected, and it's not going to be corrected in a three-month period like we tried to do a couple of years ago. three-pointer. By Rice, and then the steal for the Citadel after the tray. Lazy pass by Rido, lazy closeout. And Najdawi compounds it with another triple. Caden Rice, his fifth triple of the day. Najdawi, his first six quick points. Is the Bulldogs the lead again, up two. They're calling for the ball. They have no angle on that entry pass. Now they get it to him. They're backing down. Goes to the sweeping hook shot. Tip try, no, and that's down we secures. Stalwart, Frierson, three in a row for the Bulldogs. This is Bulldog basketball at its finest. Nine straight. Collins is followed by Notch Dowie. It's another pass that has way too much air on it. Rido is looking at his teammates going, you have to come back to me, and I agree with him. I said this in the first half. They almost left the point guard at times on an island. I don't think Brian Gregory's happy. I think he wants a timeout. Well, three straight triples by the Citadel. Nine straight for Co Coach Baucom's troops. And they have now opened up a five-point advantage. Rice hits the first one. And then the steal leads to Nacho Dowie's tray. 
And then it was Frierson to make it three in a row. And there's Coach Mark Wise's, one of his favorite <laughs> pep bands. The USF Bulls find themselves down five all of a sudden. Three quick triples. And you were looking at the numbers. Very impressive shooting. Hayden Rice, five of six from beyond the arc. USF, a step slow to come out of the locker room. You cannot guard this squad being a step slow. USF one of six from the field here in the second half. The Citadel three of five, all threes, and another near turnover. They now have 10 to the Bulls. Shot clock reset, and it should not have. No. There was never a change of possession, so the officials will have to either look at the monitor and discuss what should be on the time. Uh, one of the things that impresses me me about the Citadel zone is their activity with their hands in the passing lanes. The Rideau pass to Lang, Lang was open, but I thought it was a great job by Frierson getting out in the lane and deflecting that with his right hand. And that's what led to the clock being reset. Well, you cannot turn the ball over against the Citadel team. Now, 11 turnovers have resulted in 20 points. Now they reset it to nine seconds. Now 20 points off turn off turnovers for the Bulldogs. Rideau with eight. It's a high ball screen through the legs of the dribble, spinning. Collins has it with two. And one second on the shot clock for the Bulls. Yeah, Rito's was spinning into trouble against the zone. You've got to stop. This is a quick catch and shoot or lob at the rim. Let's see if they go to Yetna. They lob it up. Yetna whistle. That will not count. A foul is called against the Bulldogs. So that will frustrate Duger. That will get the clock back to 20 on the rule change from last year. So a big break for the Bulls. And he is still not sitting down. Off the inbound. Stallworth hit the deck. Collins penetrates, whistle, and one. Maybe got a little con continuation on that. Coach yeah. Bauckham didn't like that call either. I thought the foul happened first, way before the shooting motion. Collins, though, shows you again how he is so powerful. There's the foul, and there's no shooting motion there, so we'll catch a break there. Collins now two of six from the field, but he is five of five from the free throw line. Nine points. For their leading score, David Collins, 16 and a half a game he averages. Here's Frierson, Rito able to track him. Spin pass into the corner for Stallworth. Notch down we for three. And that out of bounds to the Bulldogs off of TJ Lang. USF caught another break because Durr's closeout on Nudge Dowie was way late. He is more than capable. Yeah, he's hit one here in the second half. Stallworth penetrates. Rice partially blocked, but Cotlin's got arm. And three free throws upcoming for Caden Rice. But you knew it either had to be a foul or a deflection because Rice has shot lights out here this afternoon. It'll be three shots coming back. And there is the Bulldog huddle as they ran off nine straight points to take a five point advantage before the three-point play by Collins. There's the contact, Mark. Yeah, I think this is a good call when we looked at it again. Watch Collins hit the arm or the hand. It's just enough to yeah. create the contact and the foul. And I've always said you must protect every shooter at all costs. And even the slightest of, of contacts 
requires a foul. Have got Caden Rice on his follow through. Rice doesn't go to the line much, just one for two. Now one for three. So explain to me how a guy can be a knockdown three point shooter and struggle at the line. That's all mental, right? You're the coach. Free throws is two things and two things only. Repetition, do you just do the same things every time, and confidence. confidence. Unless you have hands like Taco Fall. Right? Well, that's different. That's a different ball. That's one of the reasons why big guys cannot shoot free throws. Because it would be like you and I trying to shoot a, a volleyball, for instance. So Rice hits two of three. They break the pressure nicely. Collins, a little jump stop with the left hand. Second effort this time. He draws the foul on Reed. And back to the free throw line goes David Collins. Much better press attack by USF. The ball was moved ahead crisply, and that's what led to the Collins attack at the rim. I think Brian Gregory kind of senses that his team's a little flat here in the second half. He's trying to get some energy going with his squad. He will insert Justin Brown back in the game. Collins connects. He is now six of seven from the free throw line. Brown gets TJ Lang, who is still yet to hit a bucket. Stallworth bounces underneath. Rice for another triple short. Stallworth collects the long rebound, deflected out to him, and a fresh shot clock. Steal by Collins. Collins flying into the rim, and he lays it in. Yeah, he wanted to dunk that, but he remembered the last play of the first half. And that Frierson pass split his teammates. And that is turnover number nine from the Bulldogs. Watch David Collins anticipate, shoot the gap. But watch, he's going to dump this. He wants to dunk it and thinks, oh, you know what? I better not miss two in one game. <laughs> so Rashawn Williams checks back, the freshman. Brian Gregory wanted more energy. David Collins has given more energy. Williams was an energizer in the first half for the Bulls. Collins, little head fake, and then scores. Nice adjustment in the zone attack. Put Collins in the middle. USF has retaken the lead. Williams checked by Rideau. Kern. Uh, Jowie, fadeaway jump hook is in. And he hit it around yet now. I thought that was a good non-call. Williams draws the foul on the freshman in line to shoot two. A little more transition action, you pointed out. Much better executing that attack against the press. It almost looks like Brian Gregory has told his team, be more aggressive attacking the Citadel pressure. So Williams to the free throw line. Rashawn scoring two points off of the bench in the first half. Connects on the free throw. And young fellow's making a run at playing more minutes. He's only played five minutes on the whole year, and that was in a blowout win over Ohio in Jamaica. Scored a couple of points there. Najdawi heads to the bench with his third. Excellent free throw shooting continues for the Bulls. They are now 12 of 14. So Burgess back in. Ooh, Rito thought he had a clean swipe, maybe got him underneath. I think this foul is on Collins as he went by Stallworth. He just kind of reached in and grabbed his arm, and he knew it. He knew when the whistle blew. Can see LaQuincy's reaction. Second foul on Collins. Williams is a high ball screen, kick to Burgess. 
screen and pop. Williams, pull up jumper with a hand in his face, buries it. Oversized as well. It's a tough finish. And here's USF again. Everybody goes down the floor. They leave the guard alone. Collins for three. Bam! Talked about him shooting so well in the last couple of games. The oh quick my answer. Goodness, is that fast. Burgess connects out of the corner. No time to celebrate. Citadel back up by one. Oh, well, here's a box and one on David Collins. Frierson is chasing Collins in a man-to-man. -man. The other four guys are in a zone. What's the best way to beat this defense? Somebody's going to have to step up other than David Collins, like a Justin Brown should get a look. Rideau spins left, up and under. What a circus shot, nearly put it down. Transition, Burgess goes to the rim this time. Excellent ball movement. Ooh, but a walk on Reed. And you see Dugo over there just saying, go up and shoot it. I, I can't believe there's a player on the Citadel's team who doesn't think they need to shoot it. Right that away. That they need reminding. <laughs> <laughs> so the freshman back in at point, Xavier Castaneda, who averages four points a game. He was ranked as the sixth best prospect in the state of Illinois by 247 Sports. Different. Coming out of Whitney Hunt, Young High School. Excuse me, Ari. Different guy, but it's the same box in one. Oh, that pass was late. USF fortunate to get it back. Collins, beautiful move, but couldn't finish. And he's the one guy that shouldn't be allowed to score Gets in a box back. and one. And here's an ill-advised pass on the inbounds. David Collins makes a three in transition, but watch how quick the guys in blue counter. There's the Collins three. It's an inbound pass, two passes later from the corner. That's why I talk about you cannot run back down the floor against the Citadel in the middle of the floor. You must come out wider, and if they score two at a time, so be it. Now there's Rice back on the court. Well, for David Collins, the leading scorer, he had six points in 18 minutes in the first half. He now has 13 points in the first seven and a half minutes here in the second. Castaneda. Brown will launch. Well shy. Stalwart surveying coming across. Puts his shoulder down, drives and scores. Just kind of smash mouth hoops by the point guard into Castaneda's chest. 12 minutes remain. Brown's got to look to be a shooter just because you missed one. You know, if Brown and Lang, neither one are making shots, it'll be tough for USF to knock down. That's a shot you must take. See, that's short. Same spot as the other one. Front rim, Frierson. Ooh, he stepped out of bounds. That negates what would have been his fifth triple, which is right on his average. Fifth in the nation. And here's the strong drive. The strength by the grad student, Luz Stallworth. And welcome back, everybody. This is the American Conference on ESPN inside Brian Gregory's huddle with his team trailing by one here. Back and forth we go in the second half. And Duger Balkum has gone to this box and one defense. Why? He wants to eliminate David Collins from the offensive equation. Collins already with 19, and you can do that because Justin Brown and T.J. Lang have combined to only go one for seven against the arc. USF is going to have to have another score. And a big dunk. Send it down, big man. Another good find by Rido against the pressure. They incur, but right back at you as soon as you start feeling comfortable. 
The Citadel attacks back. And that's how the Bulldogs score in the paint. Off the bounce, Lou Stallworth. Casaneda. Rideau muscles in the paint. Brown in the corner, a little bit reluctant now. He rises for three in and out the line drive shot. The Citadel by one, Stallworth crossover dribble and it poked away, but a reach in foul is called on Xavier. Let's go back and take a look again. Reed, Rideau with the throw over against the pressure and Kerr with the easy baby flush. Right at you, jam cam. Is that a baby flush? That's a baby flush. I hate to see the grown man flush. <laughs> Slip Whoa. screen, yep. Nicely executed. Nice, nicely done by the Citadel. What does the slip screen mean? It means that Najdawi there comes like he's going to set a screen on the ball and then slips to the basket. Well, you called it. Coach Baucom doesn't have a seat on that bench. Literally, there is no seats available, and he doesn't care. He's probably roamed about 100 miles <laughs> already. And he's not sitting at the end of the bench. Ryerson, the hand in his face too strong. That might have been a little quick, even by the Citadel standards. Rido. Oh, step through. They're going to call a block, count it, and a foul. And that is on Notch Dowie. That is number four. Notch Dowie's got to know his importance to the game and him taking the charge with 10 and a half minutes ago is not the most important thing. Rideau with the extra step, yep. Not only is he moving, but his heel was in that arc, that defensive arc. That's an automatic. So they come back with Connor Kern for Williams. And also Alex Reed, or excuse me, Derek Webster Jr. returns to the court. With Notch Dowie departing. Rito. The front end. And over the back to the dismay of Antoon Marichevich. Yeah, I like that call a lot. I, I, I wish officials would call more of that because on free throws, it's almost gotten to be a free reign just to ride your guy underneath the basket. USF by one. Ten minutes remaining. Stallworth all the way to the rim, scoring. I think you got to play off of him. He's too good, too creative. And he now has ten. And Lang has got to make a shot. Back on four. Nada for three. He's strong with that. And Rice runs down the loose rebound. Stallworth looking for those seams in the defense. Aiden Rice has five triples. Excellent ball movement. Rice, number six, with yet now right in his grill. Seems like USF just cannot catch up to the quickness of the Citadel offense. Lead extended back to four for the Bulldogs. Terrific ball game here this afternoon in Tampa. Yetna from the right elbow. Backing down, takes the fade away. Maybe he should have just taken that 15-footer. And that's a settled shot. Good scramble and the dunk for Marichevich. It's one of the few times that Stallworth just tried to go a little too fast after the rebound. I think it was Rido who got back involved and created the scrum. Turnover number 13 for the Citadel. Stallworth jump stop left and shy. 
Yetna has fouled on his rebound. Uh, that will go on Webster Jr. The Citadel had finally gathered a rebound inside. Stallworth goes too fast. Rido knocks it loose, and that leads to the easy deuce there. And the Citadel with already seven team fouls make it eight. So that puts USF to the line. So Lexus yet no one of one from the free throw line today. 13 points. Front end of the one and one. It is good. USF now 13 of 16 from the foul line. David Collins back in the game, so I'm anxious to see if the Citadel goes back to this box at one. Yet no. Looking for the tie. Smooth stroke for the redshirt freshman out of France. He's been solid at the line. The Bulls have been solid at the line. The Yetna now with 15 points, hoping for his third consecutive double double. Right now, he's only at six boards. And that ties a career high that he just set against Win uh, against FAMU Wednesday night. Yeah. He had 17 rebounds in that Georgetown game. Uh, that was a career high. Bryce now with a game high 20. Burgess oh. nails another one. He's not shy. Fresh off the bench, Tyler with his second triple. That was a call from the bench. No box in one this time. There's Lang. Still can't find that first basket here today. And open three in transition. Rice put back is in. 22 for Rice. And again, USF a little frustrated because their shots are not going in. And they get beat on the glass as a result. The ball's got to get to David Collins somehow. Collins has it now. 19 points for David. DJ Lang, the transfer out of Auburn. Collins can't connect. Kern on the floor, screaming for a timeout, and he is rewarded. Well, the Citadel making effort plays on both ends of the floor, starting to feel good about their chances on the road. Why? The constant three-point threat. Caden Rice knocking down another, and the Bulldogs up five. Bulldogs feeling good now, up by five. We talked about the enormous contrast in styles, which style was going to win out. Right now, the Citadel, 15 of 32 from beyond the arc, 6 of 12 this half. USF just 3 of 18 mark, 1 of 6 from three-point land in this half. That's minus 36 in three-point differential. Man, is that hard to overcome, but the Citadel feeling it because they're shooting better than 63% from the field in the second half. Now, if USF is going to get back in this, I think they need to win this segment. They need to come up and figure out a way to get a couple of stops. They have been dominant in the paint, 36-16 outscoring the Bulldogs. See what Coach Gregory, his team, one of the best defensive teams in the conference. Stallworth with five, working against Rido. Good defense by Rido. Turnaround, Jay in and out. And rebound out of bounds to USF. That ball did everything but go in, didn't it? Rattled around, fell out. And Lou Stallworth now five of nine from the field, 12 points, four assists. Burgess departs. Webster return as they go even smaller. Their tallest player on the court is, is 6'5". Here's a Citadel. Lang for three, yes. That's a good call by the bench. It's an organized play, screen on the ball, and then a screen off the ball. 
USF back to within two on Lang's first bucket. And that was a big one. Beautiful pass from Webster. And scoring the recipient, Connor Kern. What I think has happened is USF now is so three-point conscious, the Citadel's taking advantage of some action going to the rim. Here's the same play opposite side. But see, Lang wasn't ready to be a shooter. Rido, a high archer is in. Back-to-back -back three balls for the Bulls. Bulls back to them one. Or disorganized, Ooh. yep. Wow. Fortunate for USF that Rice didn't knock down another one. He has six triples. TJ Lang looking for his second straight. On cue, I said they needed Lang to make some shots. USF back on top. Frierson pounded by Collins. Near steal by Rito. In the hands of the trustworthy veteran point guard Stallworth. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Gets the switch, launches a three. And TJ Lang upstairs for the rebound. And that's not the shot the Citadel wants there off the switch. Rito wide open, could knock it down. Hard to argue against the shot, but I want David Collins to get a touch. Rejected, yet throws it back. USF is running the same play against the skunk zone. Watch, it's a screen for Rito coming at you from his right to left, and then a screen inside out, which springs open Lang for the corner three ball. They've run it the same way on both sides of the floor, and Lang has delivered. So Najdawi back on the court with his four fouls. With four and a half minutes to play. And trying to free up Frierson. Wide open three for Stallworth is good. Well, even though he doesn't take many, you cannot give anybody that kind of look. And back and forth we go. Back on top. What a game this is. Thanksgiving treat. Rito all the way to the rim. Leaves for Williams, but drew the foul. Rito upset. Because he set up an easy deuce for Williams. Rito to the line. I think they called this on the pass. It's team foul number nine. So, so this will be the bonus. And that is the fourth foul on Alex Reed. So Reed joins Dodge Dowie with four. You see Rido bent over. He's had the assignment of keeping up with Stallworth the entire game. Rido, the front end, spins it in. A lot of backspin on his ball. USF now 15 of 18 from the free throw line. LaQuincy. Three of four. And that one doesn't drop. Kept the line by Lang, and Rito just muscles it away with his physique. How about the effort play by Lang, though? He's the one that kept that whole play alive. Well, that's one Lang's got a catch. Yeah, he was ready to launch that, trying to hit his third straight triple before making the catch. Yeah, both teams have lived here lately at the line, at that arc. First it's Stallworth, and then the Bulls counter, and we are all tied in the last segment. And welcome back, everybody. What a ball game we have this afternoon. Coach Brian Gregory working his team. Coach Gregory was a member of that Navy Elite Eight team playing with David Robinson back in 1986. But what does his team need to do down the stretch here, Mark? Well, you just want, you're not going to shut down an offense like the Citadel, but he wants a stop. So coming out of this timeout, defensively get one stop and work from there, how about this? We have had 21 lead changes in this game. 
Absolutely amazing ball game here this afternoon. The score has been tied five times, and we are locked right now at 73. 340 to play. Stallworth. Now we puts it up and rolls it in. Again, that's a call from the bench. Nice read by Stallworth, taking what the defense allows. Now we now with eight points to go along with four assists. USF has gone really small here. Well, that's a shot. Lang's got to shoot. You're Rido. Sh I was going to say you're the shooter, but Rido yeah. says maybe I am. <laughs> Make him believe his third triple. And another lead change. USF by one. Rice. Stallworth has been breaking down the USF defense with his penetration. Mismatch inside, if they can get him the ball, I don't think they can. Three seconds, two seconds, poked away. Ahead to Rido, flying in, he will lay it in. One of the few, two, three. One Excuse the me, few times the Citadel looked a little hesitant on the offensive end. Yeah, good point. Stallworth. His drive is cut off. Fryer set for the tie. Too strong, and it will go the other way to the dismay of Zane Najdawi. And that is number five, Mark Costly for the Citadel. Yeah, credit Rido as we take another look. Late clock situation. Reed really didn't have much of a chance. That leads to the easy deuce. But it was Rido who blocked out Najdawi on that play, and that's what le leads to the free throws. As pleading his case is Duger Baucom. I think Duger wants them to go to the monitor to look at something. He didn't get what he wanted. Yeah, it was a tough call against Saint. So it'll be LaQuincy Rito at the free throw line. You see the free throw differential. LaQuincy, three of five today. And his shooting two, a double bonus, misses the first. Well, you get that kind of discrepancy, but it is that type of game with the Citadel launching three-pointer after three-pointer. Yeah, USF is made to get free throws. The Citadel is not the way they attack. Rito, one of two, extends the lead up to four with 2.20 to play. And with this much time, there are way too many possessions for either team to get a little hesitant offensively. Connor, Go ahead and attack. Connor Curran back in the game. Stallworth will do just that. And one. Lose Stallworth. Just about the time Rito was clapping his hands, trying to defend and keep up with Lou Stallworth. Stallworth just aggressively, fearlessly attacks the rim for the and one. So Stallworth to the line where he's two of two. He now has 17 points. Make it 18. And back to within one. Interesting lineup for Brian Gregory. Four guards and Yetna. Trying to match the Citadel on the perimeter. David Collins. That's where USF wants the ball in his hands. Castaneda in crunch time. The freshman on the court. Collins, open three wide rights. I don't think he ever had a grasp on that ball, coach. Not a bad look, nobody around him. That wasn't even close. Oh, Rice back on the court. Rice, game high 22, six trays. Minute 35, Lou Stallworth. Working against Rito. Terrific matchup. Blows by all oh, the way in. No help defense. That's just a total breakdown. 
Plus, I'm not sure why you're guarding Stallworth that high. Stallworth now with 20. Coach Gregory wants a timeout. I completely agree with him. Rideau pressuring him here. He blew right by him. And no rotation defensively for a very good defensive team. You remember, Rideau has not been out of the game very much at all. He's been asked to keep up with Stallworth and chase him all the way around the floor this afternoon. Yeah, good point. Stallworth, 20 points, five rebounds, five assists. Or the transfer. He played 79 NCAA Division I games with both UT Rio Grande Valley and UTEP. Inside Coach Gregory's huddle. What is the strategy here, Mark? Well, again, I think he liked his last possession because the ball went below the free throw line and then they had ball reversal, and Collins was open at the three. I think what he will want Collins to do this time, though, is be more aggressive and attack the rim. Uh, David Collins now one of four from three-point land. He does have 19 points. The Bulls were four and five in games decided by five points or less last year. They're already one and one. They've already played a couple. They beat Austin P here by four, lost to Georgetown by three. Now that experience can, can only help them here in crunch time. Minute 14 to play 20 seconds on the shot clock. Castaneda remains in the game. TJ Lang roaming the baseline. He's hit two triples in a row. Collins penetrate, jump stop, goes to the left hand. A late whistle comes in, and that will send Collins to the line to shoot two. That's what I talked about, having Collins not settle, but attack the rim. And I think that's five fouls also, and now Coach Balkum has a decision to make because this will take one of his inside rebounders out of the game. This makes them very thin in the front court. So that's Alex Reed. He's only 6'5", but plays, as you said, that power position for this Bulldog team. A little more physical at 2'10". Yeah. And here are the kind of free throws you cannot simulate in practice. And Collins, 7 of 8. And you talked about his need to improve his free throw shooting coming in, and he's responded already. And where would the Bulls be in this game without quality free throw shooting? And clutch for the sophomore out of Youngstown, Ohio. Quayson Williams, Williams is going to get a run here for Coach Balkum late in the game. Quayson Williams into the game. A minute remains. Can USF keep Stallworth out of the paint? Rido backing off just a little bit. Stallworth around a high ball screen, gets the switch. Has Yetna on him. Kern to the rim, scores! Way too easy. The Great execution, though, in their spacing. Coach Gregory gets the timeout with 37 seconds. His team trailing by one, so 13-second differential. Game clock, shot clock. Again, the Citadel has been so good at getting twos in this half. Take another look. The drive by Connor Kern, the finish at the basket. And again, remember USF has gone small to match the Citadel on the perimeter, which means they don't have the same rim protection that they've had. Yeah, good point and so concerned with jumping out at three-point line, it makes it an easy blow-by opportunity for the Bulldogs with the dribble. How about this for a turnaround? In the first half, the Citadel, in their two-point shooting, was three for 11. That's 27%. Here in the second half, 11 for 14, and they're the undersized team. And just by the couple of points that coach just made. 
Well, I don't think there's any great mystery here. I think the ball's going to end up in David Collins' hands. Let him be the decision maker. Yep, the way he's shooting free throws right now, eight of nine, he has a double bonus. And you don't want to waste a lot of time. You don't want to rush, but you don't want to waste a lot of time in case you don't score. Then you need to foul immediately and notice that Brown is back in the game. So that gives USF two shooters now to work off Collins, Lang and Brown both in the game. And Collins 15 points here in the second half, 21 for the game. Justin Brown, just one of seven today. Rito has it, dribbling left. Swings it back to Brown as they look for Yetna in the post. Collins has it now. Well defended, double team, loses the ball, and the steal for the Bulldogs. And timeout. Well, the ball did not go in side to Yetna, and Yetna was open. Brown just didn't see him. They got what they wanted on the throwback. But when the ball went inside, or excuse me, didn't go inside, then Collins kind of rushed his penetration, dribbling into trouble, into traffic, and then the heads up play by Connor Kern to fall on the ball and take the timeout. Oh, that's terrific help defense by the Bulldogs. Quason Williams and Connor Kern digging for that ball. There's a good look at Connor. Grad student transfer from Arkansas State. Now 22 seconds. Here's what I'm thinking if I'm Brian Gregory. Defensively, I'm going to zone trap, and I'm going to get one good trap. If you cannot get a good trap, then you need to foul. So every game on the scouting report is a list of who you should foul in a close game situation. And oddly enough, Lou Stallworth is only a 63% shooter at the line. I wouldn't hesitate to foul because USF has only committed 17 fouls, so it will be one and one. And uh, having said all of that, even if you foul and they make both, it's still a one possession, one possession game. Yeah. Well, Lou is two for two here this afternoon. You got Frierson and Rice, who you definitely don't want to foul either one of those guys. Connor Kern is at 80 percent. Quason Williams, he is one for one on the season, so he may be a target. He's inbounding the ball here. Yetna guarding the inbound with his length. Alexis, 6'8", long arms. They get it to Frierson. Now there's the initial trap. Now you've got a foul. So they foul Stallworth. It will be Lou heading to the line, and as Mark pointed out, a one and one with the Citadel up one. And you're in no man's land if you're USF. I think you, if he makes both, you have to go for three because you want to extend the game as long as possible. And if he misses one, then you don't have to settle for a three. You can drive to the rim. As Coach Gregory shouting instructions, Stallworth three for three from the line, 20 points. And he connects. This the veteran. Four guard lineup for USF means Rido is actually boxing out on the free throw. Pretty unusual. Yeah, 6 1. So Stallworth, the grad student out of LA, connects on both. It's a three point advantage. Let's see if they go for the quick two or the three. That ball knocked off of the knee, and another turnover. Two turnovers down the stretch for USF. Coach Gregory wants to go to the monitor here yeah. and review this one. The spacing wasn't very good on the play. And for the second consecutive possession, USF dribbled into traffic. Yeah, we talked about their experience 
in close games late already this season. And we'll have a good look right there. And wind it back. Who's needed to go? I have gone off for Stallworth. Boy, I don't know. I think this yeah. may be off Stallworth. This might be overturned. It did appear to hit Lou's knee. Boy, what a break this would be for the Bulls. With 10.5, if you want to draw up a three, who do you well, it's gotta draw be, it up for? Yeah, Collins, Brown, or Lang. You have three different options as USF continues to try and overcome this three-point differential. Citadel's made 16. USF has shot the ball better here in the second frame. They've made seven. But that's a nine three-point make or 27-point differential, and that's just hard to do. Yeah, Brown just one of six from three-point land. Collins one of three. T.J. Lang two for five, and he's hit his last two. So will it be drawn wait up? Till you, wait till Duger Bauckham gets a load of this call. Yeah, they, uh, that's the correct yep. call. Now they've got to regroup. If, if I'm the Citadel, I'm thinking about taking a timeout to get organized. And they will bring in Kaleon Harris for defense. They've reset the game clock to 11.2. And again, do you foul, do you not foul? I'm a believer in fouling, but the, my, my window is the 10 second mark, so I'm not fouling right away. If the pass comes into backcourt and they take three or four seconds to get organized, I'm fouling. Can you make it? Okay. We'll see how the coaches play this. Lang will inbound. Comes into Rito. 10, 9. Collins gets a good look. Oh, short. Back to Collins to tie it. Wide left. And the Citadel survives despite USF getting a quality look for David Collins. Two of them in the last. 10 seconds, not bad looks either time. But Collins unable to make the three ball, and as a result, that three-point differential that I talked about, too much for the Bulls to overcome. So the Citadel, two true road wins consecutively. They win at James Madison in overtime, and then they come down to Tampa and upset the USF Bulls. Now, this is a strong team. They are going to be tough in the SoCon. Pick six in the preseason poll, but that guy gives them a different vibe. Because of all the three-point shooting, they need a different presence block to block, and they get it from their point guard, the grad transfer, Lou Stallworth. So 84-81, the Citadel wins it here at USF for Drew Vincent and his crew. Statistician Jeff Herbert. My partner, Mark Wise, it was a three-point barrage for the Citadel in a fantastic game here in the American Conference. Stallworth finishes with 25, leading the way for the Bulldogs, and they win it by three. I'm Ari Shanock saying thanks for watching. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving weekend. So long from Tampa.